In my prior video, I talked about some preparation work that a person who seeks to recover from porn addiction needs to take. In this video, I'm going to discuss goal setting. If you haven't seen the prior two videos, take this time right now to go back and watch steps one and steps two. So, two men walk into a bar. The first man says, bartender, I'll have a beer. And you see that pretty lady at the end of the bar, get her a beer too. The second man says, bartender, give me a whiskey. And you see that pretty lady at the end of the bar, tell her to buy me a whiskey too. Alcoholics have a ton of jokes that cut to the chase about their disease. A casual drinker can drink a beer and walk away, not thinking about inebriation or methods to get inebriated. For an alcoholic, inebriation is always on their mind. The addiction cycle feeds dependency that immerses those afflicted in it. Porn addicts are no different in this regard. The thoughts and feelings surrounding porn use become all-consuming. The porn addict craves the next use because the euphoria trumps most other experiences. The goal setting that happens gets corrupted by the addiction, putting higher and higher weight on pornography use than the other mundane things like sleeping or domestic responsibilities. So when embarking on recovery, it's important to set realistic goals. Those goals should be both tangible and have time components that measure the immediate future. One sure way to screw up addiction goal setting is to make unrealistic goals. For example, saying, I'll never look at porn again, is a noble goal, but it's poorly constructed. Living in this modern age, it's impossible to know if you might accidentally run across pornographic images that you had no intent of seeing. Furthermore, the promise doesn't give any short-term measurable time frame to measure the results. A better goal might be, I will not browse or search for any pornography for one week. This goal now defines a specific behavior and gives a measurable outcome. Your job is to write down three to five goals that are constructed just like this. Make the goal succinct and give it a short-term measurable time frame. Your other goals should center around things that trigger you. For this, you really have to brainstorm on experiences that might make you want to use porn. A good practice is just to get a sheet of paper and a pencil and write everything down that you can think of. I know from my personal experience that my trigger list grew over time as I discovered more experiences that made me want to use porn. So do the best you can and don't worry if you miss something. You can always add on to the list later. Your list might look something like this. Stress at work. That attractive news anchor on the nightly news. That woman in the gym who wears the tight booty shorts. Being alone at home. Visiting my favorite message board. Now, that list identifies clear trigger events. How would you translate those to goals? A goal doesn't have to be based around avoidance. It can be based around a positive behavior. So for stress at work, one goal might be take a half hour walk around the building during my lunch break, at least three times a week. This allows you to test drive the goal. If the goal requires modification, it can be tweaked the following week. Uh, for the one about the woman wearing the tight booty shorts, the implication is that the visual sight of this woman induces a strong sexual urge. It might be possible to avoid the time she goes to the gym, but who's to say some equally attractive woman won't be wandering in at another date? So, um, you know, necessarily avoiding the one person doesn't preclude that there won't be another attractive woman that you would also have to avoid. A better goal might be to work with your mind at stopping the obsession over this woman's body. How about, if I see this woman at the gym at this time of the week, I will immediately go back to working out and focus on my routine or look down while resting between sets. One thing I wanted to mention about goal setting is that you should start small and keep them at five or less. If you try to go over, you're just going to be tracking too much and there's just too much to follow. Also, don't beat yourself up over slip ups or failures. You gotta remember, you're early in this process and you're in really trying to strengthen your resolve. It's going to take a bit of time to achieve some mastery over this. Keep recording your goals for short time spans. I recommend starting out weekly. When you feel confident, expand your time frame for months or even years if you choose to. 
You might discover that some triggers are easy to master and others are more difficult. So don't be rigid with your goals. Allow some flexibility to move your new goals in and out and remove the old ones that you thought were bad but ended up being not so bad or even easy to master. The bottom line is making sure you're setting realistic expectations in your behavior modification and making sure that everything's attainable. One goal I would like you to do is find a sponsor. If you heard my prior video, I mentioned that the 12-step programs can be instrumental in helping you break the addictive cycle. You should set a goal for yourself to find a sponsor within the first month of selecting a 12-step program of your choice. Don't avoid this one. It's too important. When entering in as a new member, you could even tell the group that you were seeking sponsorship. If you don't get one right away, don't worry. Just keep on repeating the message at every meeting. When you secure a sponsor, share your goals with them. Let them know how you arrived at the goals and let them know if they have any feedback because, you know, let's face it, they've probably got more experience than you at this, so they might have something to contribute. Also, share your wins with your sponsor. You know, anytime you're, you're successful, especially attaining your goals over that specific time frame, let them know, man. Celebrate that victory. This is part of the recovery process. You've got to be able to know when to celebrate and it's important to have an audience to celebrate with. Last thing I wanted to do is let you know that, you know, finding rewards for yourself is pretty important. So reward yourself and find things that are both healthy and enjoyable. Make a list if you have to. If you hit all your goals for any given week and you really like bowling, go bowling. Get a few frames in. Celebrate your achievements and keep mixing up those rewards. 